Hello everyone. I fell into the rabbit hole of reading about exercise intensity and volume in the relationship with longevity. There is a question of what is the ideal dose of exercise to live a long and healthy life. Well, there is not a clear-cut answer to this. In fact, the field can be divided into two main schools of thought. One that says that the more exercise you do, the better for health and longevity. And the second states that there is an upper limit for exercise dosage that is optimal for health. And if you go beyond that, then exercise becomes detrimental. So these two models are represented in the following graphs. On the left side, we have the curvilinear model in which the risk for a bad health outcome is highest in a sedentary person and the lowest in those engaged in the highest volume of exercise. However, because the relationship is curvilinear, the gains are much more pronounced at intermediary exercise training volumes, and the accrual of health benefits becomes much lower as one approaches high training volumes. On the right side, we have the alternative model, proposing that once the threshold of exercise training is crossed, then the health benefits start to be lost, and it may actually become detrimental to health. This is the model used for the current exercise guidelines for the population, which is actually demonstrated by the yellow bar, uh, showing the range of exercise training volume that should be recommended for the population. Now, it's important to, to notice that there is compelling evidence to support both models, but we need to consider some important variables when analyzing the data. So let's first analyze a paper that has just been published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine, and the title is Outrunning the Grim Reaper, which is quite suggestive. It is actually a retrospective cohort of the first 200 athletes to run a sub four minute mile to determine the difference in each runner's current age or age at death with their life expectancy in their country of origin. The authors used sub four minute mile as an example of extreme exercise in pushing the body to its physiological limits. And just to put this in perspective, one mile equals 1600 meters and running it under four minutes means a pace faster than 2 minutes and 30 seconds per kilometer. I think we can all agree that this is a very this is very difficult to do and requires high training volume and intensity to be successful at this. So the first athlete to break the 4 minute mile mark was Roger Bannister, a 25-year-old Englishman who ran 1 mile in 3 minutes in 59.4 seconds, back in 1954. Unfortunately, he died at the age of 88. He is not among us any longer. Now, the current record for the mile belongs to Hishan El Garouge from Morocco, with a time of 3 minutes and 43.13 seconds, which is approximately 2 minutes and 20 seconds per kilometer. Pretty fast pace. And this was set back in 1999, 25 years ago, when Hishan was actually 24 years of age. Now, there is evidence that strenuous endurance exercise increases the risk of developing cardiovascular problems. And atrial fibrillation is an example of this. This is demonstrated in this graph, in which the risk of AFib is lower than known exercises exercisers in those exposed to relatively low exercise volume as depicted by the green area of the graph. However, as the exercise volume increases, so does the risk of developing a fib. In fact, it becomes either equal, the yellow area of the graph, or higher, red area of the graph, than non-exercisers. So there is an indication that exposure or chronic exposure to high intensity and volume of exercise may actually cause some detrimental cardiovascular 
or may be detrimental to cardiovascular function. So the researchers came up with the following rationale, that if chronic exposure to high volumes and intensities of endurance training were detrimental to the body, then pushing the human body to its physiological limits would negatively impact the health and longevity of sub four minute mile runners. Interestingly, when looking at the survival rate based on years after achieving sub four minute mile, the researchers found that sub four minute mile runners lived on average 4.7 years longer than the general population. As we can see on the graph, runners depicted by the red line consistently outlived the matched general population, which is depicted by the blue line throughout the period of the analysis. So the conclusion of the authors was that these findings challenge the hypothesis that extreme exercise may be detrimental to longevity and reinforces the benefits of exercising to the lifespan, even at the levels of training required for elite performance. However, it's important to consider the following points. Number one, in this study, the cause of death was not determined for most subjects. There could be some of them that died, for instance, of a car accident that has nothing to do with involvement in exercise or the effects of chronic exposure to high volumes and intensity of endurance training. Number two, there was no information on lifelong exercise habits. So part of the longevity benefit could reflect the accrual of cumulative benefits from lifelong exercise in some of the athletes. Number three, there was no information on other lifestyle factors, such as diet and smoking or cardiometabolic risk factors and other potential medical confounders to longevity, such as hypertension, and dyslipidemia, or even genetics. Number four, it should be noted that a minority of athletes, such as those with genetic predisposition, may develop cardiac complications as either a direct result or accelerated by exposure to high volumes of intense or long duration exercise. So as you can see, there are several limitations to interpret these findings. Thus, the best approach is to conduct individualized assessment of health risks in any athletic cohort if one wants to really tease out potential benefits of exercise training versus other predispo uh, predisposing factors that could also affect longevity in athletes. So to conclude, Stay active and healthy, and I'll see you in the next. Bye for now.